Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Veteran Stadium here in the city of New Britain. We're glad to be here today to talk about an important issue to get us back to in-person classroom instruction as well as back on our field to play. We're grateful that yesterday we were able to start up our fall sports season with football conditioning and very shortly on August 26th we'll have all of our fall sports going. As you know, we are joined with DPH uh, earlier this summer to, to spread the message to stay in the game and support those who are eligible for vaccinations to get vaccinated as our primary strategy for mitigating the impact of COVID and keeping us active in in-person instruction, as well as being on the field to play in our gyms and in our pools this fall. As we come out here today, I would really like to thank the director of New Britain Park and Rec, Eric Barberi, for his efforts in making this possible, as well as Matt Schofield and Lenny Cordo from New Britain. Uh, also, thank you to Representative Sanchez for being here today uh, to support this message as we prepare for the beginning of the 2021-22 school year. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the Honorable Mayor of New Britain, Aaron Stewart. Thank you very much, everyone. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you, officials, for being here today. Um, what an exciting day um, to be here to talk about an issue that is certainly not partisan, and that's getting the vaccination. Um, there's no Republican or Democrat way to keep our community safe, to keep our kids safe, and that's what we're here to talk about the opportunities uh, this afternoon. The city of New Britain has had incredible efforts with trying to get our community vaccinated, um, to get people over that hurdle of vaccine hesitancy, to let them know that it's safe. Uh, we've done billboards, we have had uh, campaigns on the radio, on TV, in local newspapers, you name it, we've tried to reach every corner of our community to encourage people to get vaccinated. We want our kids to be here playing on this field. We want our sports to continue. We want school to go on as normal as possible <laughs> this fall. Um, and that doesn't come without coming together as a, a community to make sure that all of us are doing our efforts. Um, right here in this parking lot too, uh, we've talked about with the Department of Public Health having one of the testing locations uh, be right here in Veterans Memorial Stadium parking lot. So that's gonna give lots of access to not only our students at New Britain High School, but the local community too, being uh, easily accessible off of Route 9 and 72 um, to make sure that, that we're doing all that we can to keep those numbers down. So we're very grateful for the partnership. We look forward to continuing to work together and to continue having our kids playing on this field and of course having the CIAC championship here too, right? I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. As we ran our spring championships last year, we partnered uh, with New Britain when we ran our uh, outdoor state track championships here to run vaccine clinics during that time as well. During our baseball clinics and uh, baseball championships and tennis championships, we also had vaccine clinics running at that time. And a lot of the work we do at CIAC, in addition to the collaboration we have uh, with Governor Lamont's office and the Connecticut DPH, we also work very closely with the Connecticut State Medical Society Society Sports Med Committee. And the liaison from that group to our CIAC Board of Control is Dr. Carl Nissen. Uh, please welcome for a few words now, Dr. Nissen. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, honorary guests. So uh, as the spokesperson for the Connecticut State Medical Society, and as Glenn said, as a, a liaison to the CIAC and trying to make the most appropriate medical decisions. I'm here just to state from the clinical side of medicine that we can't eradicate the COVID. It's, the COVID virus will be around probably maybe forever, but certainly for several years. Just look at the flu. The flu has been around forever. We all get vaccinated for the flu, and yet many of us still come down with the flu. I think unfortunately going forward, that same thing is gonna be true with COVID. However, the most important thing we need to do is not to eradicate, therefore, the, the virus, but whether, rather what we need to do is to mitigate the side effects, to reduce the risk to our, all of us. We want to make sure that all the athletes get a chance to get back on the fields, all the students get back into the classrooms, and the best way we know right now from a medical point of view is to get the vaccine. So we can't more strongly recommend that you do that for whether, you, whether you're thinking about the vaccine as being safe or not, that has been proven for a long time that this particular vaccine is even safer than the live virus flu vaccine is being given. So it is a very safe vaccine. Clinically, we want you all to, do, to get the vaccine, 
and encourage everybody else that may be connected with you in one way or another to get the vaccine if they have not already done so. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see everybody on the fields real soon. Thank you, Dr. Nissen. We'd like to highlight to you now uh, some ways that our schools are working to offer vaccines to kids and do the best we can, not just for our student athletes, but all of our students uh, to, that are eligible for vaccines to have the opportunity to receive one. With that, I would like to introduce to you the Bloomfield High School principal, Dan Maletti, and their football coach, Ty Outlaw, who will describe for you a program that they're running at their school uh, to help make this possible for their students. Please welcome Principal Dan Maletti and Coach Ty Outlaw. Uh, thank you, Glenn. Uh, very happy to be able to share with you uh, Bloomfield Public Schools' efforts to get our children vaccinated. Under the leadership of Superintendent Dr. James Thompson, Jr., Bloomfield Public Schools is partnering with Bloomfield and West Hartford Department of Public Health to team up and offer vaccinations for all of our students during the school day. Um, we look to do those for any student who is unvaccinated with parental consent to come out. We'll issue an appointment one or two days in early September to be followed up 21 days later to receive their second vaccine. Uh, by doing this, we hope to continue to make our school and district safe, keep our schools open, keep our children in the classroom, and keep our athletes on the field. Thank you. Uh, just to piggyback on uh, what Mr. Maletti said, uh, we're super excited to be on the football field this year. And our goal is to stay on the football field this year. And that's the efforts of, you know, the safety of our kids and the safety of our staff and families uh, for us all to be vaccinated. Um, I think that will help us stay on the field. Um, and that's the ultimate goal with the safety of all of us. And if we do it and we stay together, I think we will have a, a great season. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Coach Tyler Outlaw. I also want to give you an opportunity to hear from one of our student athletes. Again, as we make these uh, decisions and we get out here to play sports, uh, I think it's really powerful to hear from our kids and, and hear how meaningful it is for them to be back, not only to be this week starting up their football practices, but you're going to hear from a young man now who I think wants to be here in December when we play our CIAC State Football Championships here at Veterans Stadium in New Britain. Uh, right now, I'm going to bring up for you student athlete from Xavier High School, Drew Crone. Drew is an outstanding football player and quarterback for Xavier High School, as well as an outstanding baseball player. And he has signed his commitment to continue his baseball career right here in Connecticut at the University of Connecticut next year. Please welcome Drew Crone. Governor Lamont, Dr. Gifford, Lieutenant Governor Beiswitz, and honorable elected officials. As Mr. Lundgren said, my name is Drew Crone, an up and coming senior at Xavier High School, Middletown. After a long year without football, I could say my coaches, teammates, and I could not be more excited to get back on the field this fall. Due to Xavier offering a vaccination clinic held in the spring, I was fortunate enough to use this to my advantage and get vaccinated. As I stand here today at Veterans Stadium, it is my hope, along with the thousands of other high school athletes in the state, to have a chance to compete for a state title, such as football will in this very field. One way we can guarantee the safety of all that participate in a full season to occur is to take the initiative and get vaccinated if not done so already. Athletics are such a big part to many student athletes in the state, including myself, and we want to assure not only we have a full season, but also a normal school year football games, homecoming, prom, and other school events will be able to take place if we take the charge to get vaccinated. To all my fellow student athletes out there that have not been vaccinated yet, I encourage you to sign up and stay in the game. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. It's, it's always great to hear from our student athletes. We have so many others here today that you're welcome to, to speak to afterwards as well. 
Uh, before we get on to our next guest, again, I want to recognize the people behind us. We have players, coaches. Uh, we have representation from the Connecticut High School Coaches Association Executive Board, the Connecticut Association Athletic Directors Executive Board, and, of course, the CIAC Board of Control uh, representation here as well. Thank you, everybody, for coming out to support this important message today. I'd like to introduce to you now the principal and dean of students as well as baseball coach from New Britain High High school again we're great to uh, grateful to share in, in these great facilities here and please welcome Damon Pierce the principal of New Britain High School and Roberto Mercado the Dean of Students and baseball coach from New Britain High so I'm gonna go out oh sorry I wasn't used to the feedback there I'm going to go out on a limb here and uh, make a comment for all high school principals in the state. High schools are really complex places. Our schedules are built in such a way that we have multiple students passing and going to different classrooms with different students. And while I didn't speak about it with Dan, I'm sure he, like me, is going out of his mind trying to come up with mitigation efforts to prevent the spread of COVID. But I can guarantee you the one thing that is guaranteed to really help promote, promote that safe uh, environment for our students is the vaccine. So I would encourage every family to have a really deep conversation. And if you haven't yet received the vaccine, please uh, take that into consideration and, 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 and do so. Dan's offering at his school. We have clinics up at high school, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, other clinics available out there for you to take advantage of as families. Consider it, and please get it done. Thank you. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Um, so I'm going to do this in Spanish for our communities our Hispanic community so they understand what's going on today. And I think it's important for them to understand that getting the vaccine is something serious and something we should definitely do. Los departamentos del CIAC y CTDPH se han unido para proveer las vacunas COVID-19 para todos los estudiantes elegibles y estudiantes atletas. Los estudiantes atletas vaccinados no tienen que ponerse en cuarentena si están en contacto cercano con una persona positiva a COVID, siempre y cuando no experimenten ningún síntoma. Este beneficio de vacunación mantendrá a nuestros estudiantes en el salón de clase para recibir instrucción en persona y en nuestros campos deportivos. Como entrenador de béisbol, puedo compartir mi experiencia de la primavera pasada y lo que especial que fue regresar al parque con mis jugadores. Nuestro mejor plan de acción para evitar que COVID-19 que no perdón, evitar que COVID-19 no sea parte del juego es vacunarnos. Eduquémonos todos sobre los beneficios de las vacunas COVID-19 para poder maximizar nuestro tiempo juntos en escuela y especialmente los deportes del CIAC. Gracias. Thank you, Principal Purse, and thank you, uh, Coach Mercado. When we started this uh, COVID-19 uh, with our schools, we were under the direction at the State Department of Education of current U.S. Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. Secretary Cardona's leadership was exceptional with our member schools, with all of the schools in the state of Connecticut, of moving us forward in dealing with the pandemic. As Secretary Cardona moved on, we are fortunate to now be led by Acting Commissioner Charlene Russell Tucker. She has done an exceptional job continuing to move us forward and get us back to in-person instruction, as well as dealing with many other facets of, of state education. With that, please welcome Acting Commissioner of Education, Charlene Russell Tucker. Thank you, Glenn. You know, we know that our students learn best in person, but it's not only learning that happens inside the schoolhouse doors. It is consistent access to nutritious meals, access to social, emotional, and other health-related supports, and of course, access to extracurriculars and athletics. In the previous year, amid the challenges, our school leaders, educators, our students, our staff worked hard to ensure access to in-person learning. 
and a big thank you goes out to all who contributed to that outcome. We also know that school attendance was stronger last year when students attended in person. And in the voice of a student regarding past year, the student says, I feel like I am losing my bond to my school because more of my school experience is centered around my desk in my room. This bond to community, to the school community, is powerful. In person is powerful. That is why we are here today encouraging our students, our faculty, our staff to use every tool in their toolkit to keep themselves and their school communities safe, and that includes vaccination against COVID-19 and the continued usage of all the mitigation strategies in our school facilities and also personally. Sports and athletics are an integral part of the whole school community and of student development. So we want our students to stay on the field and yes, in the classroom this fall. Vaccination of all eligible athletes, coaches, and officials is currently the most important mitigation strategy we have available, preventing COVID-19 outbreaks within our school communities, and yes, preventing our students and staff quarantines that may result in interruptions in in-person learning. Again, working together, let's stay together to ensure that our student athletes stay not only on the field, but in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. At this time, uh, I'd like to introduce to you the Acting Commissioner of the Department of Public Health, Deirdre Gifford. And uh, again, I don't think anybody has had more of a challenge uh, during her tenure than Dr. Deirdre Gifford has. Uh, we are extremely grateful for the partnership with uh, the Connecticut DPH, uh, with Commissioner Gifford, as well as uh, with Tom St. Louis from DPH, who has been there to answer every phone call that, that we've made and help guide us along the way. Uh, so with that, Please welcome Acting Commissioner of Connecticut DPH, Dr. Deirdre Gifford. Thank you very much, Glenn, and uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Commissioner Russell Tucker, and Madam Mayor. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity this afternoon to talk about the importance of vaccination for our back to school efforts. I want to say a special thanks to all the student athletes who have joined us today, the coaches and administrators. Um, at DPH, we know that uh, high school and middle school sports have been anything but normal over the last year. And uh, Glenn can tell you that about a year ago now, we were having some very difficult conversations about how to safely engage in sports um, with CIAC and our student athletes. Last year, obviously, we didn't have the public health tools that we needed to adequately protect the health and safety of athletes during many of the normal activities that make athletic participation so special. We heard from so many athletes and their parents and families last year about the vital importance of athletics to the health and well-being of students. Thankfully, though, this year, we have an excellent tool, an outstanding tool in the COVID-19 vaccine, and that can help us pave our way back to normal sports, normal schools, and normal lives. So we're so grateful to have this tool at our, uh, available to us this year as we think about getting back to sports. We have, uh, so far, our 12 to 15-year-olds in Connecticut 46% of that group are fully vaccinated, and 58% of that group have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. So we have a ways to go with our 12 to 15 year olds to get everybody vaccinated and back to school safely. Our 16 and 17 year olds, 63% are fully vaccinated and 72% have received at least one dose. So great job for all of those uh, students and student athletes who've taken the step of getting vaccinated. Um, as the coach was men mentioning, a vaccine can help you preserve your season. How can that do that? First of all, your chances of getting COVID if you're vaccinated are far, far less. And importantly, 
if you're vaccinated against COVID and you're exposed to someone who has COVID, um, you won't need to quarantine in the same way that we saw last year. So we saw so many seasons and classrooms interrupted last season uh, because we didn't have this tool at our disposal. You know, I was thinking about uh, a sports metaphor going into this fall, and I was thinking about our, our student athletes who are so anxious to get back on the field, back in the pool, uh, back in the gym, and they have an opponent, which is the opposing team, but they also have another opponent this year, which is COVID, and, and it's a tough opponent. And we're all engaged in, in the fight against COVID-19, but this vaccination tool is a really effective way uh, to meet that opponent and defeat that opponent on and off the field. So at DPH, we're calling on athletes to do what they do so well, which is to be leaders on and off the field and get vaccinated, to protect themselves, protect their teammates, their season, their school, their family, and their community. With that, I wanna say uh, thank you to Glenn and CIAC for uh, all of the hard work and partnership together and for helping us to organize this event today. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz and I wanna bring forward all of our athletes, female and male, come on up here. Come on, take, don't be shy. We know you're not shy. And I'm doing this because this is what this press conference is all about. We want to make sure that these student athletes stay on the field. And we know that they are all role models in their schools and on the fields. It's about them. Now, our state has led the way in vaccination efforts, but there's work to do. And the work is largely within this age group, as our commissioner talked about. And as we just saw in Tokyo, getting our athletes vaccinated is a way to get us back into the game safely and keep our athletes on the field. We all missed football and so many of our sports last year, last fall from the Thanksgiving rivalries and games. Um, so getting vaccinated is the ticket to a safe 20, 2021 fall season. By getting over 80% of our adults vaccinated, we've made great progress, but there is so more to do, particularly while the Delta variant spreads so quickly. And I, want, I think this point is really important to make. 96% of the people who are in hospitals and who have died since December have been people who have not been vaccinated. It's a very clear and powerful message. The athletes that join us know this, we appreciate it and we wish them a very successful school season. So with that, before I introduce our governor, it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, one of our important partners in our state legislature who represents this district state representative, Bobby Sanchez. Bobby, come on up here. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you to everyone that's present today here in the city of New Britain. Um, it is so important that we get the word out that vaccination is so, so important so that we don't have the interruption that we had last year um, due to the pandemic. Um, the numerous calls that we were getting up at the Education Committee, at, you know, as chair of the Education Committee, reaching out to people like CIAC and many others and, and Dr. Tucker and Miguel Cardona, and just having numerous meetings about how we would move forward, particularly this coming year. And let's hope there's no interruptions. Let's hope that everyone will get vaccinated and that we will have in-person education um, here in the state of Connecticut, because it's so, so important. Social and emotionally, it's so important. And um, we're gonna continue to move on, to get the word out. 
Um, we still have some issues within the minority community to try to get people vaccinated. We are working very hard towards that. And I want to thank the governor, thank the lieutenant governor, um, the commissioner of DPH for the um, outstanding work that has been done here in the state of Connecticut as we led in the nation for, uh, with people um, getting vaccinated and also getting tested. So um, let's hope for the best this year and let's not have any interruption. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Sanchez. And I do want to highlight, um, just before I bring up the governor, um, how important young people are. They are the moral compass of their parents. I know my kids are always uh, making sure that we recycle in our household, that we protect the environment, and uh, our young people can be the moral compass as well for their parents and lead the way to help keep us all safe. So with that, uh, it is my pleasure to bring up our fearless leader, Governor Ned Lamont. Are you ready for some football? I'm ready. And track and field, don't get me wrong, and volleyball. Look, um, we missed you a lot last year, and we're getting it right this year. By the way, to our scholar athletes, it's all about keeping you safe in the classroom as well. And um, Commissioner, now Secretary of Education, Miguel Cordona, uh, Charlene, then Deputy, we got our schools open last fall. We got them open safely. Uh, during a pandemic that was rising. And we did that. The schools were some of the safest place to be. And we're doing everything we can to make sure you're going to be in school and you're going to be in the playing field at the very start of this school year, right through the school year. It's the best way to learn. It's the best way to be with your friends. It's the best way to win on the ball field. And we are going to win. We have a little bit of work we got to do. I think you heard a lot about vaccinations. Come on, 12 to 15 year olds. Come on, 15 to 17 year olds. Step up. We really need you to do it. It's for your safety. It's for your team. It's so that nobody has to step off the field. You can stay involved and keep learning. And when it comes to learning, let me just give you the facts. Um, uh, we've been the best in the country when it comes to uh, people getting vaccinated and low infection rates, but we're not an island unto ourselves. Uh, I just got the numbers again for today. The infection rate continues to go up, despite the fact that we have 80% of our adults vaccinated. We're up at 4.2%, 3.4% 3 .4 for the week. So that gives you an idea of what the trend is uh, on that front. And another 36 hospitalizations. As you heard from the doctor, uh, the vaccines um, don't always keep you from infection, but they keep you from suffering the worst complications and they keep you safe and they are working. And that's something you've got to do and tell your friends, because I know you guys are all smart enough if you're eligible to have done it. And it starts in the classroom. You know, I want you safe in that classroom and I want you in that classroom. If you're in that classroom, you're learning. And if you're safe in that classroom, you're playing volleyball or football or track and field afterwards. So we are gonna continue the same executive order that we had uh, last year that allowed our schools to be open safely. And that meant for um, those of you K through 12 students, I want you to wear the mask. You're gonna wear the mask at least for the first month. Uh, we get everybody back to school. We get everybody back to school safely. Make sure that you can learn safely. Make sure that your teachers can teach safely and make sure you can beat your rivals on the playing field safely. That's what we've gotta do. We did it well last fall. We're gonna do it again this fall and show the rest of the country we know how to do it safely. Uh, we'll be uh, laying out those uh, regulations in a little more detail for you, but to Glenn and CIAC and to uh, all the coaches who are here, I think you know why we're doing this. We're doing this to make sure that each and every one of your players can stay on the field and we can keep winning. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Governor. So uh, we have all of our experts who've spoken, um, and we are very pleased for, uh, to have such a a good showing from our media partners, and we'll take any questions. Is that something that, given the numbers, you just felt that it had to be done? 
It was a hard decision. I mean, uh, hard in this sense. Um, we were doing so well for so long, and we had uh, so many more of our people vaccinated. And um, I know the mask can be a pain to some people. Uh, but given where we are, given what the spread is right now, given the success the mass had last year when the pandemic was a lot more severe than it is today, you know, remember, we, we have 300 people plus in the hospitals. You know, back in the bad old days, we had 2,000. So keep it in perspective. But I want to make sure everybody can be in that classroom safely. I hope it's not something we've got to do for more than a month or two, but time will tell. COVID has its own timetable. What is your message to local school districts? My message to local school districts is uh, this is the rule. This is going to be a statewide mass mandate for all students uh, K through 12. I don't want a lot of ambiguity there. And uh, I think we're going to be starting that at the start of the school year. So please be prepared. And by the way, the tighter the mask, the more effective it is. recommend uh, third shots uh, for many or most Americans. Uh, what do you know yeah. about that and, what and for potentially rolling out in Connecticut? Well, first of all, I'm hoping everybody here gets their first shot. Uh, that's uh, priority number one for me. Uh, look, for um, folks who are immunocompromised, we're already uh, making sure vaccines are available to them. The booster, that was, uh, you know, green-lighted just a few days ago. And my uh, strong feeling is probably within the next month plus, folks of my age and above will probably uh, have to get a, um, a booster shot. And I can tell you that uh, Deirdre is ready for that. We've got uh, access to the vaccines. We've got a distribution system in place. We're ready to go. It just seems like, uh, especially for some of the older uh, constituencies, that second shot uh, begins to wear off and some of its effectiveness after eight, 10 months. So let's err on the side of caution. Uh, getting appointments for the initial vaccine. Where's, um, you want to take that? Well, it's, the system is, is really quite different from where we were last at the beginning of the vaccine campaign. First of all, most of our vaccine providers are doing walk-in uh, right now. Uh, we'll wait and see, as the governor said, what the FDA and the CDC say about the, the populations who are recommended for boosters, um, but walk-in appointments might very well continue. Um, secondly, we'll probably, if it's a large group that needs a third dose, we'll probably stand up for some period of time some mass vaccination clinics. That will make it easier for people to get vaccinated. We've also done a lot of work on the VAM system. Uh, we got a lot of feedback, and uh, we've made a lot of improvements. Um, and then all of our vaccine partners have been uh, their own appointment-making systems as well. If we need to, we'll stand up our vaccine appointment assistance line again. But we need to get a little bit more information about who needs that third shot. Governor, some um, elected officials have questioned the idea of having individual towns decide whether to mandate masks indoors for the entire population and have said that it would be easier, more helpful, safer to just have a statewide um, mandate. So why have you not chosen to go that direction? None of our neighboring states are, are doing this. Uh, we've got five, ten of our municipalities that probably have a little lower uh, vaccination rate than the rest of the state have gone ahead and said they wanted to mandate that indoors. I'm finding that our, um, just like our coaches, by the way, our restaurants and store owners have been very uh, careful about uh, making sure that people um, who are unvaccinated um, have to wear the mask and enforcing that so that people feel safe going into their facility. So I don't think we have to make a change at this point. None is anticipated. And Governor, could I, I'm just, I just want to add this to your Point. So I was just talking to Rudy Marconi, who is the first selectman of Ridgefield, and he said he got together with a group of his neighboring mayors and first selectmen, so Bethel, Danbury, um, and New Fairfield, a bipartisan group, and they all decided to put in mask mandates in their towns. So we're finding that our mayors and first selectmen are on their own in geographic groups starting to do this as they see upticks in COVID. Do you think colleges are also on their phones? Uh, as you know, UConn lawsuit against the team from, from down. Uh, 
I think all, the overwhelming majority of the colleges um, on their own, maybe, but they are uh, mandating, uh, you know, vaccines. And uh, everybody's going to be vaccinated uh, going into those schools as best they can. It's congregate settings that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, look, I don't want everybody being down about masks. I mean, we're going to have school this fall. We're going to have winning football and track and field here this there fall. We've turned in the corner on this thing. We're going to break the back of COVID. We can't break it without each and every one of you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.